Hey everyone, my name is Riley, and in this video, we will be taking a look at Todoist versus TickTick. We will be taking a look at both of these tools side by side, taking a look at the pricing, the features, the functionality, the pros and cons, to figure out which of these tools is going to be best for you. The first thing that we have to talk about when talking about Todoist versus TickTick is the pricing. Because the way that both of these software are priced is very, very different. So we can see on Todoist right here, we have three different plans. We have this beginner plan right here. We then have pro and we have business. These are all of the features right here. So from beginner to pro, we go from 500 personal projects. So projects are essentially different boards that we can set up. I will show you this later in the video, but we can go from five to 30 over here. So pretty big jump. With the pro, we also get access to the calendar layout, which we don't get with beginner. We can get task reminders. We get an unlimited activity history versus a one week activity history. And we also get an AI assistant. So most people will probably be wanting to go for this plan right here with Pro. And business is essentially designed for teams, as it says right here. With business, we can get a shared team workspace, 500 team projects, and a few other items. But the main difference with this is with Todoist, we can switch between yearly and monthly. So if we go for the yearly plan, this is going to cost on average $4 per month. Whereas if we go to the monthly plan, this is going to cost $5 per month for the pro. So that is the paid plan. But of course, most people will be starting out with beginner. That is what we will focus on in this video. But as I said, TickTick is very different because we still do have a free plan. However, when we upgrade, we only have one thing to upgrade to rather than having two different plans we can choose from. We can only upgrade once, and this is TickTick Tick Premium, and this costs $36 per year. That is it. We can't break it down into monthly billables like we can with Todoist. It's a one-year upfront fee. Now, $36 is not a crazy, crazy expensive software. Both of these tools are relatively cheap for an online software, but that is something to keep in mind. With Todoist, you can break this down and pay this per month with it being slightly more expensive. But with TickTick, we just pay the entire thing upfront if you do want to upgrade. So that is the pricing. But in this video, I'm going to be comparing the free version of both of these tools. Now I am inside of both Todoist and TickTick. I have a brand new account set up. And as soon as you load into both of these tools, this is what you're going to see. Both of these tools have a lot of the same areas, but the user interface and the way that we access them are slightly different. For example, the search tool on TickTick. So if we were searching for a particular project or task, we can access that right here on the left hand side. And then we search in this area. Todoist, on the other hand, we go to this left-hand panel, we can click on search, and then we can search for anything we are looking for in this area. We do have a similar layout in this area though, where on TickTick, we can access today and see all of our tasks today. We can access the next seven days and see all of our tasks over the last seven days. And we also have our inbox where we can see all of our tasks. And then Todoist is pretty similar. So we have the inbox tab where we can see all of our tasks. We have the today tab where we can see everything that is due today. We then have a calendar view right here. This is called upcoming on Todoist, whereas on TickTick, this is called calendar and we can access that right here. With that being said, in my opinion, the calendar on TickTick does look better. Like this is genuinely a better calendar view than we can see on Todoist right here. The main difference is that on TickTick, you do have to pay to upgrade to this calendar view. On Todoist, we can also go up. So this is the board calendar right here. So this is essentially going to show us any overdue tasks. And then we can see the next three days lined up here. We can then scroll along and then we can see the following week. And overall, this is a calendar view. Like this is how I would describe it. Although it's not a perfect calendar, we do have to upgrade for this. And then on TickTick, we just have to upgrade to get any type of calendar view. Now let's go ahead and actually add some tasks into our inbox on both of these tools and see how they are going to look. So what I'm actually going to do before this is just go through and delete all of this default like tasks and things that they have given us. So let's actually go in here and add into the inbox this video that I'm creating right now. This is a video that I need to create today. So we can go to Todoist. We are in the inbox area. We can click on add task. And in here, we can create the task name. So let's go through and call this Todoist versus TickTick Tutorial. 
And then we can go over to tick tick and do the same. So we are in the inbox area and we can go to this top search bar and enter this in right here. So once again, we will go to Todoist, Todoist versus tick tick tutorial. And we now have these both entered. So let's see the options that we can do with these. On tick tick, we can click on this down arrow and we can set a priority. So we have no priority right here, which is this blank flag. Low priority is going to be blue. Then we have medium and high priority right here. So let's say this is a high priority task and that's going to be tagged as high. We can also go down and add this into different lists. So we don't have any lists created right now, but essentially lists are where we can organize our tasks. So I could create a list for YouTube content. I could create a list as a to-do list. And in here, we can go in and add this task to different lists. We can then add an attachment to this. So if we have any files that we would like to upload, and those are basically all of the settings that we have on TickTick. We can also go over and choose a due date for this. So let's say that this is due today. Perfect. We can select that. We can then select the time that this is due. So let's say I want to record this at 10 a.m. And then we can choose if this is a repeating task and when this repeats. So let's add this in for 10 a.m. today. We can click on OK. And then all we have to do is click on Enter. And that task is now going to be created. Let's now see the options we have on Todoist. So this time we can actually add a description. This is something that we can add on Todoist, but we actually have to create the task first. So I wouldn't necessarily say that one is better than the other. It's just that they are laid up differently, but we can add a description of the task here. Once again, we can add a description of the task. So let's say uh, record, edit and upload Todoist versus TickTick. And I will paste this into here as well as the description. Then we can also add a due date. So this is very similar to what we saw in tick tick right here. We can add a due date right here and we can also add the time that this is due. So let's say that this is set to 10 AM. We can then click on save and that is going to be saved right there. We can once again set a priority. So low to high and the flag colors are the exact same. So let's set this to a high priority. However, if we try to add a reminder, we can't add a reminder without upgrading. So this is something that TickTick -Tick does better because if I go to add a task right here, let's just go and add a new task as an example. I'm not actually going to save this, but we can actually add a reminder right here. So I can say one day ahead, I can add a reminder right here. And that is not something that we can do on the free version of Todoist. So that is definitely a point for TickTick -Tick right there. We now have both of these tasks added to the inbox. And this is what you are going to see when we have a task added. So some people may prefer the layout of Todoist and how this looks. I personally do, but some people also might prefer TickTick. It's genuinely a personal opinion. Another cool thing that we can do with both of these tools is we can add different sections. To do this on Todoist, we just kind of, we, we kind of have to guess where this is, but we just move down until we see something that says add section. So it's right here. We click on add section and then we could name this section today. So we could have a today section. And then with the tasks that we have, we can drag this down into this section that we have. So we now know in the inbox, this is due today. Then we could go down and we could create a new section right here and we could call this tomorrow. And we could add this section right here. And then we could add a section and say next, next week. And then we can add tasks into all of these different sections right here to show where we have tasks coming up. So we could also go in here and add a section and say that this one is for YouTube content. We could add that right there. And then we could add a new section and say that this is a to do list. And rather than having different time periods, we can schedule this out into different projects that we have. So those are just some ideas that we can get with sections. We can also add sections on TickTick. -Tick. So if I go over to TickTick -Tick right here, the way that we do this is slightly different though. So we would go up to these three dots at the top. Then we can go add section and let's call this section. Let's just say YouTube content. And then we can add that right there. And then let's add a second one. So add section and we'll call this to do list. One thing I do like about tick tick is as soon as we create these other sections, it's automatically going to create a section called not sectioned. So I can move this into YouTube content. I can move this back into not sectioned. However, on Todoist, they don't create this. So I can move these around like fairly easily between these two YouTube content and any other sections that I have. But if I try to move this back out to like a not sectioned area, it's just not going to let me. So what we do have to do is we have to create our own section called not sectioned just like that. 
and then we, we whoopsie, I just created a task there. But you get the idea. I can go here and create a new section called not sectioned, just like that. And then I can move this down into not sectioned, maybe move this up to the top. And once again, it is a minor issue, but I do prefer the way that Tick Tick does this automatically. So now that we have the basic principles and we can see the layout and how we can create different tasks on both of these software, I'm going to create a few different tasks so I can show you these dashboards and show you how this is going to look when we have a few tasks in there. So we now have all of the tasks added in right here, and this is the layout on both of these tools. Once again, I do prefer the layout of Todoist. I think it's easier on the eye and easier to see where everything is. So we can see today, tomorrow, and next week, we have all of these different sections right here. Then we can see the priority shown in each box. So these gray ones are no priority, then high priority and medium priority. And we can see the same thing over here on Todoist. However, these are with circles. With Todoist, we can easily see the date and time that this is due. So we can see for all of these, if they have a specific time due, we can see this immediately. Whereas if they don't have a time due, we don't see anything next to it. Whereas with Tick Tick, for example, if I go down to Take Dog 2 Training Class, this is on Monday at 9am, but we can't immediately see this. If we click in, we can see this is set to Monday at 9am, but on the dashboard, it just shows up with this little clock icon to show that we do have a set time. If the task is due today, this is different and it does show up with the time, but I don't really like the fact that they don't show the time right here. On Todoist, any time that we have a time set next to it, then it does show up immediately on that dashboard. In terms of the other menus, we can go into today on Tick Tick and we can see all of the tasks that are due today. This is the same on Todoist we flick over to today and see today's task. On Tick Tick, we can go over to the next seven days and we can see everything that is due in the next seven days, as well as the date that they are due. And then on Todoist, we can go over to upcoming and we can see the exact same layout on kind of like this calendar view right here. So we can see today, tomorrow, all of these tasks are right here. Then we can go to next week and we have this laid out in a much nicer way, in my opinion. We can also get this same view. If you do prefer this list view, we can do this on Todoist. We just go over, flick this over to list, and that's laid out right there. Next, let's see how we create lists and projects with both of these tools. So on Todoist, we just go down to my projects. I can open this up. And then we can either browse templates or add a project. Let's just go with a blank one. And in here, we can go ahead and call this YouTube content. So we add that in there. Let's set the color to red. And then in here, we can choose if this is a board or list view. So it doesn't really matter. We can choose, we can change this at a later date, but let's go for list. And that's going to be added in right there. We can either go straight up and add tasks in the exact same way that we did for inbox, but we already have some tasks in inbox. So let's add them to YouTube content. To do this, we just go back into inbox, find the task that we want to add. So I definitely want to add this tutorial to YouTube. And then all we have to do is click into this, go over to project on this right hand side, and then we can choose where we move this. So I'll move this into YouTube content. And as you can see, that's now going to disappear. And this is going to be in YouTube content. This is still going to stay on my calendar. If I go to upcoming, this is going to switch to the calendar, but it's just a better way rather than having everything cluttered here to be able to separate them into different projects. Once again, in the projects tab, we can add sections the exact same way that we did in inbox, but let's go through and add the rest of these. So Microsoft Teams tutorial, we can add into YouTube content. Then Zoom tutorial, I want to add into, oopsie, I want to add into YouTube content. And those are all of the YouTube videos. We now have these in YouTube content. So once again, in here, we can go ahead and add sections. We could say today and then add a new one and say tomorrow and then add these both in. So this is due today. These are both due tomorrow. So we can set that up right there. And then we can also go over to the board view. So we can see today, tomorrow. You might also switch this completely and go for a different view. And rather than having dates, if we are on the board view, we might say to do, and then we might have this one as video recorded. Then we have this one as video edited, and we can kind of use this as a project manager. So I could say these are both to do, and this one is actually recorded so far, and then I can move this along the sequence. In Tick Tick, we can go ahead and create a list. So once again, let's call this YouTube content. 
This time we can choose a nice little emoji. So I, I quite like that. Let's set this to like a video emoji or like this, a TV. We can set the color, the view, the folder, if we want to set that up. I'm just going to leave this as it is. And then we can set up if this is a task or a note list. Let's click on add. And this is going to show up alongside lists. Once again, we can go back into the inbox and then change this to everything that we need. So we can go in here and say move to YouTube content. This one is move to YouTube content and then zoom tutorial. We will move to YouTube content as well. And that's all going to show up in there. Then we can create sections. I'm not going to go into detail with this. And if we want to change the view, we just go up here, click on the view, and then we can change it over to the Kanban view. So once again, very similar in this area. One major important factor that Todoist is going to have over TickTick is templates. So if I go to create a list on TickTick, you can see I can't create a template right here. Like there's nothing I can go off of. I have to create the entire thing myself. Whereas on Todoist, when we are creating a new project, we can choose from all of these different templates that people have created. So we have like a client management template right here. We have a meeting agenda template that we can basically just copy and paste and then switch out what we want to switch out. So as an example, let's say we are setting up a sales pipeline. We can select that right there, copy to projects, and then this is going to be added in as a project. And then all I would have to do is go up here, change the titles if I want to change them, remove some of these leads and add in new leads. And I really prefer this over Todoist. The final thing that I want to touch on with both of these tools is the themes that you can get and how we can customize this. So we can go up here into settings on TickTick and we will do the same on Todoist. So up here and settings, then we can go down to theme and we can see the themes that we can get with both of these tools. So with TickTick, we can basically change this between a blue theme, a gray theme and a dark theme, which is going to make the entire thing dark. And then they do have some other cool themes, but you do have to pay for them. You can see they all have this little crown, meaning you have to pay. On Todoist, once again, they have some paid themes down here. In my opinion, their paid themes aren't as good, but we do have some free themes that we can switch between and we can set that up right there. So if we want to switch these both to dark mode, we can do it right there. I personally think this looks better in my opinion, but those are the two tools right there, TickTick and Todoist. So overall, these are two fantastic project management tools. There is not one that immediately stands out and is far better than the other, but in my personal opinion, I think Todoist does have the slight edge. The reason for this is with Todoist, we do get kind of like this watered down calendar view, but at least we get some kind of calendar view with this. Secondly, I think the overall layout and the user interface is slightly better with Todoist. It just looks nicer. And finally, I prefer a tool that I can pay monthly so that if three or four months later, I find a better tool and want to switch over, then I can just cancel my plan and I haven't paid for the year up front. So that is my comparison of Todoist versus TickTick. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.